Welcome back. The big event this week, without much doubt, was the announcement from the Bank of Canada where it, as expected, cut its benchmark interest rate, but unexpectedly took a remarkably dovish tone, signaling to many market participants and ordinary Canadians that more cuts are on the way. We're joined by Ian Pollack. He's Managing Director and Head of Fixed Income Currency and Commodity Strategy with CIBC Capital Markets. Ian, thanks a lot for coming in. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, we are all, I think, a bit taken aback yeah. by the dovish tone of that announcement on uh, on Wednesday of this week. If you compared the July uh, statement, the one that came this week, and the June statement, there were all kinds of changes to language that, changes. that made it clear that yeah. the bank has now begun a, a cutting cycle. What were your thoughts? So uh, you're right. It was a very dovish uh, tone of events. And so I really took three main things out of it. Uh, the first one is they changed the characterization of the job market. So they announced the job market in excess supply. And, and really, that has two implications. Number one is we know that they're using the jobless rate as a proxy for economic slack. And so what that means is it gives them confirmation that the economy is in a period of excess supply, that excess supply is going to push inflation lower. Uh, but number two, what's really important, it just means that when you think about the full range of cuts coming into the cycle, it sounds like this is a bank can that's going to do a little bit more. Because what are they worried about? You know, they're worried about non-shelter service inflation. That's being held up by high wages. If you see the job market in better balance, that means that they don't have to be as concerned about wages and inflation falls. I think number two is that, you know, you're right, they removed all reference to the word gradual. You know, it's that word gradual mm -hmm. that's really been a characterization, a, a, a really focal point of this cycle. And so by removing that, it gives the market a green light. This is a normal cycle that has a cadence and a tempo that we should be used to, uh, and it gives them the green light to keep going. The third and most... Yeah, keep going means uh, one after the other after the other? Sequential rate cuts. Right, and just okay. for context, mm -hmm. we had thought they would skip rate cuts at the September meeting. We have changed our forecast. We now see a third interest rate cut in September, another one in October. And potentially, and this is really dependent on the Fed, maybe even a fifth one in December. But the most important turn that this Bank of Canada gave us this week is they said, we're actually nervous that forward-looking inflation may be too low. Like, this is, like, come on, this is a very different way of characterizing right. how they're thinking about inflation. And so if you go down the rabbit hole, okay, and you look at the dirty details of the NPR, what they are saying is that they have a much faster view on population growth now, faster than the federal government, faster than they thought in April. And so they're telling us that maybe, just maybe, faster population growth is masking a lot of weakness in the economy, and this may be an economy that's already in recession. And there was all kinds of references. Tiff Macklem over and over again said the bank is concerned about weak economic growth mm -hmm. at, at this point, and that would also uh, underscore the bank's perceived uh, uh, need to cut rates to exactly. stim stimulate the economy. Uh, there, there's also all kinds of concern, it has been for a long time now, about uh, the higher interest burden that many Canadian households are facing. There's concern in the mortgage market Market. And there's also uh, concern about uh, discretionary spending falling yeah. in Canada because households must spend more on uh, servicing their, their debt costs, their mortgage costs in particular. How, these rate cuts that you now anticipate, how much relief do you think they will deliver to uh, debt-stressed Canadian households? So I'll tell you, I'm a very not popular person on the barbecue circuit, okay? <laughs> um, you know, let's just paint a really easy picture. Let's say you're in a situation where the Bank of Canada cuts interest rates at the September meeting and goes all the way to next December. So they cut interest rates at every single meeting for the next 10 meetings. What would the fair value be of a five-year government of Canada bond yield? It would only be about 30 basis points lower than it is today. And so the question is, how is that gets transmitted into a mortgage rate? Are you really expecting mortgage rates to fall all that much? Because you and I have talked about this a lot, but this was the first hiking cycle in history where interest rate cuts lived with those hikes. And so this is not a surprise for the market. It's already been priced. And so my concern is that this raises the probability that the Bank of Canada may have to take overnight interest rates below that neutral 275 level they've talked about. Just back up and tell us that again. You're saying that a series of five or six rate cuts of 25 basis points apiece by the Bank of Canada will only dent the yield on a five-year Canadian bond by 30 basis points? No, I'm telling you if they did eight more rate cuts, right. that it would only dent the bond yield maybe by 30 or 40 basis points because we were already priced for seven. And so that incremental addition of the new cuts only adds a marginal impact to that five-year yield. And so I think when we think about this interest rate relief that everyone is looking for, it it's may not, not be coming. as realistic as people think. Mm -hmm. and, and so do you share the, uh, the concern then about uh, a weakening Canadian economy uh, uh, driven by uh, sharply reduced discretionary spending by Canadian I households? I do. 
And I think that we have to put a little bit more tribute to this idea that the bank may have to go a little bit further. Because if we had to just kind of characterize this whole cycle, it's really this idea that during the pandemic, interest rates went above this kind of theoretical neutral level. They were always expected to come back down to that neutral level. That's not adding stimulus. Maybe this is an economy that might need some stimulus. You're also watching something that got very little attention, uh, perhaps zero attention earlier this week, and that's the Canadian repo rate. Uh, begin your thoughts with that, but just by explaining to our viewers what the, what the repo rate is. Okay, so the repo rate, I think the easiest way to think about it, it is the clearing rate of leverage in the system. If I want to buy an asset, and I'm an asset manager, and I want to use any bit of leverage, it is the incremental cost to use that leverage. And so, you know, when we think about central bankers, they lower, they raise interest rates. It's not like Gandalf the Great's behind us and he waves his wand and all of a sudden it happens. It relies on a very complex series of non-arbitrage conditions in the short end and a push and pull of market participants to get that interest rate where the bank wants it. Mm -hmm. That transmission mechanism is impaired right now. And it's impaired for two reasons. The first reason is, is somewhat regulatory in nature. The Canadian bond market just moved to what's called a T plus one settlement system. So two months ago, I bought a bond, I paid for it two days from now. Today, if I buy a bond, I'm paying for it tomorrow. And so it took a huge amount of demand into a very concentrated period of time where people need that additional leverage for a day. The second thing, though, is that it's a byproduct of quantitative tightening. You know, we've talked about this before. There, you know, the Bank of Canada operates monetary policy in such a way that it assumes every financial institution has a lot of deposits with the Bank of Canada. That's not practically true. And so the gap between the haves and the have-nots is charging a little bit more for that repo rate. So why do we care? Like, why does an everyday Canadian care about something that's very, very micro? Because at the limit, interest rates aren't falling to the degree they should because policy is not being transmitted as fast or to the degree that it should. And so that stunts aggregate demand at the limit. And it may sound a little bit sensational, but you know this is a problem. And it's a problem that we've highlighted for many, many months. And my message to the Bank of Canada, even if they're listening right now, stop quantitative tightening. I think that the lowest comfortable level of reserves has been misjudged. And so the bank right now thinks that quantitative tightening will stop in 2025. We think it happens later this year.